Okay, yeah, hello everyone and welcome to this uh, presentation on Power BI. Um, so we're hoping today to be running for around 20 to 25 minutes, but as uh, as Colleen says, if you do have any questions, do just chuck them in the chat. We'll get to them at the end and uh, we might, if uh, as we go through, uh, try and answer as many as we can while we're going through. Okay, so uh, let's start with a little bit about myself then. So uh, as I say, my name is Louis Miles. I'm the Software Support Manager here at Nexus. And I've spent about the last six years or so working kind of in the IT sector. Most of my background has been in SQL and reporting. So I've worked on all the things from bespoke systems, so built-in reporting on line of business applications, um, creating reports from scratch, so .NET, Java, HTML, that kind of thing. Um, and also spent an awful lot of time in uh, SSRS reporting services. So I expect quite a lot of you have probably heard of this before. Don't worry too much if, if you haven't. We'll kind of we'll cover it slightly later uh, in the presentation. And of course, more recently, uh, we've been looking at Power BI and all the stuff that that brings to the scene, which is obviously what we're here to talk about today. Now, before we go any further, I, I do kind of want to stress this is not intended to be a deep dive session. We're not going to kind of cover today every single thing that Power BI does. Um, it's quite personal to each individual company and organization that uses it. Um, so as, as we were kind of saying earlier, that there will be things we don't kind of cover, but do at the end, if you want to take this further, do get in touch and we can kind of organize going through much more personalize it to you and what your business would want to do with it. Um, and we can kind of go further with it then. Uh, but with no further ado, let, let's kind of crack on. Actually, what I would say as well is that if you have colleagues who you think would benefit from this session as well, we're quite happy to, uh, say, entertain a, another webinar or a one-to-one -one meeting, okay? Indeed. So, um, okay, so before we really talk about Power BI, it's, it's kind of quite important to first talk about data. And, and I promise you there's no more stupid jokes throughout the uh, the rest of the presentation. Um, so so let's, let's talk about data. So right the way from small businesses through to kind of massive multinational businesses, data comes from lots of different sources. And even in the smallest of organizations, there's likely to be a huge number of potential data sources that you might want to query. So, you know, HR systems, accounting systems, internal systems, time logging, etc. There's all of the, all of these systems um, that we keep kind of adding to our businesses. And as time goes on, we digitize more and more of our business. So business processes keep evolving. They keep moving on all the time. So in this day and age, it's not really good enough to have a static approach to business intelligence and reporting. As your business evolves, so too needs to, your report needs to evolve too. And that's kind of what I'm hoping today we're going to be able to show you how Power BI will help you to do this. There's a quote up on the screen at the moment from Gartner, and this is from April 2012, but it certainly still holds true today. And there's a couple of key points I want to pull out of this. They talk about new information types, and in my opinion, never has that been truer than today. We're adding new information to our businesses all the time. All of these paper systems we were using not so many years ago, nowadays are all being turned into digital data. And it's amazing how much we can get out of digitizing that and actually looking at that in the bigger picture of our organization. They're also talking about coherent information management infrastructure. Try saying that 10 times quickly, but it, it is one of the... <laughs> It is one of these, <laughs> I promise no more jokes, uh, but it, it is one of these things where actually we can look at each individual part of our data in quite a lot of detail, but something that generally organizations don't do quite as well is looking at the bigger picture and actually how all these things tie in together. Okay, so data sources. Let's be honest, we have loads of them. So I've put a few up here on, on the screen that, that you might be familiar with. So Excel, SQL Server, uh, or in fact other servers like Oracle or MySQL. We've got things like SharePoint or Microsoft Azure, and also third party services like Google Analytics. Now, most of these sources will have reporting built in, and I want to take Google Analytics as a good example of this. Google Analytics is very, very good at telling you about Google Analytics. What it's not so great at doing is telling you about the way that links in with the rest of your business. So as with lots of these data sources, we're very good at drilling down into the very deep parts of each individual thing. So Google Analytics, we can tell loads about that. And SharePoint, we can tell loads about that. But it's about seeing the bigger picture. It's about unpiecing this puzzle and actually trying to see everything together rather than just drilling down and seeing the detail of one. Now, I've put a few data sources up here, but actually Power BI is very good at tying into lots and lots of these. So it doesn't matter whether we're talking about files like Excel or XML, whether we're talking about databases, we've got lots up there, or even online services like Facebook, Dynamics, Salesforce, MailChimp, the list goes on. And as I say, as we digitize more and more of our business, 
Microsoft are adding more and more of these data sources and even for kind of completely customized applications, as long as we can get to the data source, we'll be able to report on that and bring that together as part of the bigger picture which Power BI provides. Okay, so enough about data. Let's talk about Power BI itself. What is it? What does it do? Well, at its core, Power BI is based into three major components. Power BI Desktop, which is the client application that lets you kind of create your data set and author your reports. Power BI Service, which is based in Office 365, and that's very much for sharing, consuming your reports, both inside and outside of your organization. And then the mobile app, which is kind of access from anywhere. Now, previously, a lot of the reporting and BI solutions out there were very good if you were sat at your desk and doing reporting, and that was great. But how many times have you been sat in a board meeting and gone, I know I've got this information, but I don't have it with me? Well, Power BI helps to answer that. All of a sudden, you've got all of this information at your fingertips all of the time. Power BI also has alerts, so you can be alerted to when certain stats that you're interested in drop below or above a certain point. And it really kind of brings the power back into your hands so you have your data when you need it. Another thing to note here is that this isn't just kind of a Windows technology only for Windows. The Power BI mobile app will work cross-platform, so it doesn't matter if you're on Windows, Android, or iOS, or for that matter, any other device that has internet access. You can always go on the web version of the Power BI and you get the full feature set. This is not kind of a stripped down version that only gives you one or two features. This is the full fledged product in a mobile app. It's really powerful stuff and it lets you kind of get your data any way you need it. So that's all really good stuff. There's also a few things that we've not mentioned here, like the Power BI Data Gateway. Uh, we will cover those briefly a bit later, but it's the kind of thing that really goes into slightly more depth than we, we're going to in this presentation. Uh, but if anyone is interested in any of the specifics, do raise it as a question and we can kind of chat about some of those things at the end. But as I say, really at the moment, we're just looking at giving an overview of what the product is and what it does. Okay, so let's start with Power BI Desktop. What is it? What does it do? How does it work? Well, Power BI Desktop fills two major roles. It does data and it does reporting. Now, throughout this presentation, you're going to hear me say over and over that Power BI puts the power back in your hands to report. And for the most part, that is true. We really want to move away now from this idea that every time you want anything reporting on, it has to come via a developer, it costs loads of money, it costs loads of time, and it's you know a really expensive way of working. We're really trying to move away from that and get it so that actually the people reporting aren't the technical people that don't necessarily know the data, but are the very people that know their data inside out. So the reporting is for everyone. However, as I say, there is a part of this which is data, and that much more is for developers and technical data analysts. So with this, it can be quite complicated to, to set this up correctly, but the benefit that you, do from, that you get from doing it correctly is massive. It does require some kind of technical know-how to do it, but the better you do that first step of setting up your data, setting up the entities which we'll come to, the easier time you're going to have in reporting. The other thing to note is that at the point where you're setting up your data, all of your permissions can be set there. Now, what that means is that as soon as you open this up for the kind of wider audience within your organization to report on, that means that all of the kind of permissions and security, that's all sorted. You don't need to worry about that once you sort that first section. And really, that's where, for most people, Nexus are going to kind of be trying to provide the most help to you to set that bit up. Once that's set up and you're kind of running with it, the reporting, as we'll see later, really, really straightforward, really, really good. So we're going to kind of go over the next couple of bits quite quickly while we're talking about the data. So, but to, to put it in perspective of kind of a bit more, what, what do we mean by this data and what do we mean by these entities? Well, when we're talking kind of about databases and quite technically, what, what we're basically trying to do is make it as efficient as possible. So we want no duplicating data. We want everything in as many tables as possible to make it efficient and normalized and all the rest of it. Power BI doesn't work like that at all. Ultimately, the people writing these reports are the people that know about their data. They don't necessarily know about the structure or the SQL or how it's all put together. So what we do is we create entities. Now, these entities can cover lots of different things for lots of different people. For example, let's take an employee. If I'm a line manager of someone, what I want to view under an employee is entirely different to what my MD wants to view. That's entirely different to what the HR team want to view. So we can really make these entities work for the people that are reporting on them. 
Moreover, we can pull data in, as we said previously, from all these different data sources. So rather than just being one database or one table or even an Excel spreadsheet somewhere, we can be pulling in the bits that matter from all of them to give us an entity that means something to us. And that's really powerful because it means that when actually we come to making these reports, suddenly we're looking at data that's understandable and that doesn't take kind of any kind of SQL or data knowledge or any kind of technical knowledge to put that together. You just have to understand your own data. The other thing that Power BI has is relationships. Now, anyone that's dealt with SSRS and models before, this is all going to look very familiar. Now, one thing I will say is this does go quite a lot deeper than that. Now, entities can relate in different ways. So, for example, we can see in the uh, screenshot up here, we've got employees relating to an age group or to a pay type or a gender, for example. Now, we could put all of those into the employee entity, and there are sometimes good reasons for, to do that. However, the, the thing to remember with these is that you can end up where entities relate in multiple different ways. Now, at that point, how do you want to link them? Ultimately, you know, if you've got, for example, data that was created by someone and last edited by someone else, how do you want to deal with that kind of scenario? So there are these edge cases that it's worth being aware of uh, when we're kind of setting up these relationships. And again, these are some of the kind of stumbling blocks that people have um, kind of come across when they've been kind of just gone off, downloaded it and, and tried themselves. And these are the kind of pitfalls that you can get yourself into. These are all things that we can sort of help out with um, if you do decide to kind of go further with this as a product. And finally, obviously, the best bit of Power BI by far is the reports. So reporting is fast. It's very flexible. It can deal with a massive number of records. You're not going to kind of be putting this under any strain, even once you get up to the millions of records, because it's all being handled on Microsoft's data centers that they've put billions into to kind of get to this point. There's lots of different custom visuals for this, so you can display data in all different sorts of ways. Here we've actually got quite kind of simple data, if you like, of just pie charts, line charts, bar graphs, et cetera. But there's all sorts of custom visuals, and we'll come to a few of those later on um, about the different kind of ways you can display your data. And as I said earlier, Microsoft are pushing out updates to this all the time. Every single month, they're pushing out huge updates to Power BI as a product. And as part of that, they're pushing out new, way, new visuals, new ways of working, new ways of customizing your data. And it's very much once you've created it once, you can always go back and tweak it. It's much, much, much less rigid than the kind of SSRS approach of once you've built it once, that was kind of it. Um, it's, it's much easier to change that once you've done it, design it over and over. The other thing that we'll see in the demo shortly is that once you've built it once, you can actually drill down and filter on things within your report. Because rather than just having like an Excel graph where we might have one chart on a page, we can actually filter down on any of this data. So if you see something that looks unexpected or untoward, you can drill down and see actually what's causing that to happen. And that's what we're going to have a look at now. So I'm going to take you through, again, quite a quick demo uh, of, of some of the stuff within Power BI Desktop. And we'll look at the service uh, and just look at the, a, a few things that you can do. Just while we're doing this, can you just uh, messages let us know you can still hear us OK? Brilliant. Thanks, guys. OK, so here is a, a kind of demo that I've thrown together quite quickly um, in, in Power BI. Now, the reason I stress this was put together quite quickly is because this would take much, much longer uh, to build up uh, if you were doing this in, for instance, SR, SSRS, for example. OK, so what have we got here? Well, we can see we've got along the side, we've got the report. That's what we're looking at at the moment. We've got our data. Now, this is all public data that I've pulled in from the um, gov.uk website. So it's all publicly accessible data. As I say, we're kind of pulling in quite a small sector here of, of kind of um, data out there. But as you can imagine, in your organization, you might be pulling from far more. Um, and we've got the relationships. Again, in this example, we're actually only pulling from one data source. If you were doing this yourself, we'd pull from far more. So what have we actually got on the page? Well, let's get rid of a couple of these and build it up from a from a bit of a more standing start. So this is very much the kind of data that you'd probably be used to in seeing your reports. It's just a table. We can see over here we've got our query, which is our entity that's built up all of this information from the, uh, the gov.uk website. Let me make that a bit bigger for you. Okay, great. So if we wanted a new one of these, for example, let's say we wanted a list of uh, the various email addresses uh, against their parent companies. Great. 
aren't very many, so let's try putting on uh, all election names. There we go. Now we can see in here that we've, we've brought this together, but actually this report doesn't make much sense. It would make much more sense to have the organization name first. Simply drag and drop, and we can move things around. It's very visual. It's very quick to get to, gris to, get to grasps with. Um, and it's, it, it's something that you can learn very quickly. This isn't something that you need a huge amount of technical know-how to put together. Once you've built up these queries, actually doing everything else comes much more naturally. Um, but we can do some cooler stuff than that too. Let's, for example, look at counties. Now, Power BI's worked out that counties probably relate to places, and it's put it on a map. Now, slight disclaimer here, because some of the count because we're using county, which isn't exactly the most accurate way of doing it, it has misplaced some of them in America. But we'll see in the next screen how we can get around that. So this map is fully interactive. We can drag around it like this. We can look at the different counties. If we make this slightly bigger. Again, all drag and drop to do this. We can hover over these various data points on the map in real time and see what they're all relating to. OK, well, that's fine. But what about if we want to actually filter down to a county? Well, with a simple click, everything else on the report just automatically filters down to that data point that we're looking at. And we can see the other ones have now um, grayed themselves out. We can even control click have a few counties at once, and all of this is just stuff built into the Power BI infrastructure. Now, everything you see on this next screen that I'll show you, this is kind of a, here's one I made earlier moment, but everything you see here took less than half an hour to create. Now, just think about that for a minute. How long would it take you to generate something like this in reporting services? Because if you can do it in half an hour, I'll have you CV. Right, okay, let's look at, let's look at kind of various visualizations. As I say, it's quite quick to move things around and to change things on these reports. So here we've got a true false bar graph. Well, actually, that's not particularly great as a bar graph at all. That would be much more sensible to have in a pie chart. OK, one click, it changes. It's there. All very simple. All what you see is what you get. Obviously, there are some kind of visualizations that won't work for all kinds of data. So for example, if we tried to do this as a gauge, for example, it wouldn't be a very sensible way of doing it. But it it is there as an option. We can also set this to a filter, for example, and then filter by false true. We can change the display of the way this looks. If we change this back to a bar graph, we can, uh, if we change this back to a pie chart, rather, we can go and change the colors. This is all customizable, all built into it. And very quickly, you can make some, well, in my case, fairly hideous reports. But you can make some fairly good looking reports fairly quickly. And you can make this look like in your business colors, you can make this very much customizable to you. And as I say, this in everything you see here took about half an hour to make. Now, let's look at the map, for example. Well, actually, at the moment, there's an awful lot of things on, uh, an awful lot of data points on that map. It looks a bit messy. It's not really telling us a lot. Well, we can actually set filters, and we can do that at the report level. So we can say, well, why don't we filter that down to only see the hospital data for, for example, Devon, and Cornwall. Everything else on the report changes automatically. The map zooms in to show me exactly what I'm interested in seeing. Now we can, for example, look at only things in for this particular latitude longitude. So because we've done it on latitude longitude, it's much more accurate. And we can click on that. Everything else on the report filters. We can use hoverovers to say, out of the 16 in Cornwall, we've currently highlighted one. The hospital data up here that says the organization's name and the website, all automatically filtering. So you can see quite quickly how we can build this up into be something quite powerful. So let's look at this, a different report. Here's a slightly more um, advanced report with a few more things on it. Now, I should stress at this point, this is not our live data. Um, so the data here is all about how long it takes to close calls. Now, this was from a demo system we were using some time ago. So again, I must stress at this point, we're not looking at real data here. Now, some keen eye of you may have noticed, well, we've suddenly got more visualizations here than we had in the previous screen. Well, that's because I'm using custom visualizations, and Microsoft have a whole API for people to make their own. So as this product becomes more evolved and more mature, we're going to get more and more ways of displaying your data. So for example, over here, we can now filter down to a certain person. For example, we can look for myself. 
and include them on the filter and everything else updates at once. For example, here we've got the average days open that these calls were. Well, let's look at those just on the critical ones, something we might actually be interested in. Okay, so in, these, in this case, everything was closed on the same day, which is great. But as you can see, it's the sort of thing where when before the number looked quite big, we can actually say, well, why is that number looking so big? Is it because it's a certain type of call, for example, that's meaning that that's staying open for that long? Drill down on it and see, yes, it looks like actually it's the moderate ones. And again, here we can see not only how many calls were closed each month, but drill that down per month. Again, this report is not something that's taking days to put together. We're talking hours, not days here, which is really important. Okay, so let's make a change to this and actually then go and view it up in the um, up in Office 365. So let's, for example, take this uh, pie chart and this time we'll make a really simple change of turning it into a bar chart. There we go. Now we can see straight away if we go up and see this as it stands at the moment in the portal, all of my customer, uh, all of my custom visuals have come across. Everything is now in the cloud, which is the way we're viewing it here. And we've got this as the pie chart as it was before. Okay, great. So far, so good. Now let's go back to here. We've changed it and hit this publish button up here. Because it's tied in with Office 365, we've got all of the groups I'm part of here that I could publish it to. For this demo, I'm just going to put it in my workspace. It's warning me I've already got a data set named that. That's fine. We expected that. And we wait. There we go. Okay, that took much longer than it should have done. Um, so, so we can see now we've published that up to Power BI. Uh, we can look at insights, which we'll look at another time. Uh, but we've got the um, openness in Power BI. Well, actually, we've already done that. So if we go across here, refresh our page. And we can see there that it's changed straight away. Now that's great because it means that actually if you're sharing these, uh, these reports out with your organization, for example, via the mobile app, you can make changes and push those out to everybody straight away. There's no more of kind of waiting to send an updated PDF, waiting to change some of your data. It's all available on the fly straight away. Now I want to show you one more uh, report that we've generated here. Um, and that's all to do with the Olympic Games. Now, this is something that we've kind of put together because it's a bit current and it shows you kind of, again, just something a bit more detailed of things you can do. So we've got the map here showing number of medals, won for each country, et cetera. Um, to, to avoid spoilers, we're not pulling this to, uh, from a real data source at the moment. It's not fully up to date. So don't worry if you're kind of waiting to go home and catch up on all the Olympic Games action at the moment. Um, but we get, we again can hover over here, everything updates. We can look at various um, continents, for example, see all those things here. We've, we've used another visualization here to view all the different kind of countries that we've filtered down to in Asia and information on all of them. So hopefully from this, you can kind of see some of the things you can do uh, within Power BI to make really visual, visually appealing reports very, very quickly, uh, and then share them out within your organization. Now, this is all built into Office 365, as I say, uh, and what, again, we're not going to go into too much detail here, is how you could then share them out with other people within your organization. Um, got a quick question? Was that published report still interactive? Yes, it certainly was. So if we go into the... Uh, uh, no, it wasn't that one, was it? It was the that one. Yeah, so just like on the desktop version here, we can click on these and everything is just as interactive in exactly the same way as on the desktop. And in fact, if we shared this out to um, onto mobiles, it would be exactly the same there um, as well. One of the things that uh, one of the things that you can do is this publish the web. And we could create embed code, publish this out to the web. Um, now, I'm not expecting any of you to be able to copy this. Um, however, if you did go to that uh, website just there, we could copy this, put it into there. 
Now, obviously, because I know this data is completely unimportant and there's no harm in it being out on the big wide world, I can kind of do this. But what we've just done there is in one click, we've made a completely public copy of this data that you can access right now from where you're sitting if you wanted to type in this massive URL. I'm not suggesting you do, um, but but certainly we can put that in the chat at the end and, um, and, and you can kind of have a go at playing around with this and seeing the kind of different data you can get out of here. So... Um, yeah, everything still remains interactive. It's exactly the same. And as I say, even on the um, even on the kind of bigger reports like this, it's all still totally interactive. One other thing just to quickly show you is the dashboards. Now, in the online version, in the Office 365 of Power BI, there's three main sections. There's dashboards, reports, and data sets. Now, while the online version does have limiting authoring for reports, for the vast majority of cases, I would say don't use that. If you want to author reports, use the desktop version. It's far more powerful. It's really the tool for the job. Um, however, you can do limiting authoring on here. What you can do, though, is create these dashboards. Now, here's one I've thrown together, again, all about the Olympic Games. Now, what this is, is a number of um, objects that we've put on here, a number of tiles, as Microsoft calls them, um, that we could share out within our organization. Now, by doing this, even though the Rio dashboard, for example, might have lots of information on, we might not want to share all of this with our organization. It might be that we just want to give them an overview, or we just want to give them the map section, or actually, they're not going to be interested in all of this, and we need to summarize it with other information. That's where dashboards come in. So we can put together as much or as little of this information as we want, as well with information from elsewhere on the internet. So um, URLs, we can put videos in here. We can put images and text in here as well. Again, drag, drop, what you see is what you get. Really useful tool for sharing this information, both within and outside, if you want, of your organization. So that's quite a brief overview of Power BI, what it does. As I say, there's far, far more here, but we don't really have time to go into to it today. Um, but hopefully it does give you some idea of the various bits and pieces that you can do with this. Again, just to kind of say, all of on the dashboard as well, everything's fully interactive. And in fact, I've currently got the on-click set up to go back to the main uh, report there as well. OK, so that's a bit of an overview. As I say, there's lots, lots there that we've not covered. There's lots more that you can do with this, particularly with sharing, um, particularly with kind of giving this to other people in your organization. But because it differs so much from organization to organization on what you might want to use this for, uh, we're not going to kind of cover it in too much detail um, here. OK, so to quickly recap on what we've seen there. Create your report in Power BI Desktop. As I say, the online version does have a way of authoring reports, but it's far more limited. You're better off using the desktop version, and it's one-click publish. Um, they're also pushing out massive updates to this all the time, so it's well worth kind of keeping up to date with that uh, and seeing the kind of updates they're pushing out, which will improve the desktop and the online version. Publish the report to the Power BI service. As we saw, that's publishing it to 365. Access your data anywhere on any device. So the service as well, completely mobile friendly. All of that can be accessed on your mobile as well. And finally, share your reports. Push your data out there. Share it within and outside your organization. Again, one of the things that we've kind of skimmed over a little bit is the kind of different ways in which the um, data can actually end up on, on your reports. Um, but needless to say, one of the, one of the kind of things that, that's worth being aware of is when we're sharing things like files or we're sharing information from files, obviously um, that file doesn't necessarily, although it can, sit on 365, for instance, in SharePoint or OneDrive or any of those ways to get files up onto 365. Um, but if you've got a file on your desktop, maybe you've got it in a shared drive on, on, um, on your kind of network, you can actually still use those and use the Power BI gateway to regularly update the data on on live with all of that uh, data from that file. Similarly, with um, databases, you've got a few options with those in terms of getting the data up there. You can either do what's called direct query, which is where you just get Power BI to talk directly straight to that database. You can also do it where you basically cache the data on there, particularly useful if you're talking about massive data sets, for example, from a data warehouse, where it's not updating that often. You can just put all of your data up there in one hit, report on it, and then set schedule refreshes for how often you want to refresh all of that data. Um, again, the security and, and kind of all that stuff is quite in depth, so we won't cover it now, but it certainly do get in touch if that's the kind of thing that you want to kind of talk about as with us more in terms of the best way of doing that. 
So Power BI for you, as I keep saying, Power BI gives you the generate you the ability to generate the reports that your business needs. It's the, the whole point with this tool is it gets away from having to use developers all the time, gets away from needing SQL skills or database skills or knowing how SSRS works and all this kind of stuff. The whole point is that this is letting people that know their data inside out do all of the uh, kind of reporting that they want to do. It's moving away from this thing of having to take technical people all the time and reducing cost and, and that way of doing it. And it's part of the bigger puzzle. It, it isn't always the be-all and end-all. And sometimes people think that, okay, well, if I'm going to bring Power BI into my organization, I want to ditch all the reporting I've got, and all I want to do is Power BI. And, and, it's, and you don't need to do that. Power BI brings together all of these other data sources, and that's where its real power lies. Taking back to the analytics version we used earlier, the analytics example, analytics is very, very good at reporting on analytics. Don't try and replace that with Power BI because all you're going to end up doing is end up spending a lot of time and effort generating something that doesn't do that job as well. Use Power BI to stick together other bits of your organization to get an overview, to get a bigger idea of the bigger picture. Don't, don't have to think like you have to replace everything in one hit um, with, this, with this software. It's not what it's intended to do. Another question? I believe we have a question. You read that, Louis. Is the Power BI pricing following a subscriptive Office 365 model? If so, the levels which cover different data sources are all the sources included. That question is incredibly well timed. So thank you for that. So the Power BI costing does vary slightly um, depending on if you're already tied into Office 365. Now, um, bigger organizations that are already using more of the features of 365, including Skype and the likes, may already find that you've got. Uh, Power BI included as part of your licensing. If, however, you're someone who doesn't use Office 365 whatsoever and you just want to use Power BI, um, the, the part, Power BI the part of it, and you don't want any other bits of um, Office 365 or any of the other bits it offers, you can get a pro license for £6.20 per user per month. Now, one thing I would say on that is don't just go to the website and buy it straight from Microsoft. Come to us because as a Microsoft partner, we often can get you better rates on that. We can often um, actually help you do other things on that and make sure that you're getting the right service that you need. And actually, uh, in the bigger Office 365 kind of scheme of things, make sure that you're um, on the right subscription for you. There is also a free version, although it has its limitations. Um, it's not like, you, you know, if you're an organization of a thousand people, you may not need the pro license for all thousands of those users. A lot of them are probably okay on the free version, and it's just the people that are going to be authoring and doing the reports uh, that would need that pro license. Again, do get in touch with us about that kind of stuff, and we can talk you through that in more detail about exactly what um, what you do and don't need the pro license for. And also, if you are already using 365, whether it is cheaper to add that on um, kind of through a different means. So how can Nexus help? So as I keep saying, the whole point with this product is it puts the power back in your hands. However, if you get that first step wrong, if you get your entities a bit confused, or if you get them linking with the relationships in the wrong way, it, you're just going to cause yourself a massive headache rather than causing you something that actually can be incredibly powerful in your business. So a few things Nexus can help you with are up here. As I say, looking at the licensing agreement, making sure we understand your circumstances, the way you're using 365, and the way that we can tie this into whatever you're already using. Uh, we can help you analyze your data sources and bring in lots of new data sources, possibly ones that you're not reporting on at all currently, um, and kind of generate those entities within Power BI. Where required, we can set up the data gateway and make sure that you know all of you, the way that your data is being accessed is kind of safe, secure, and obviously um, suitable. So is it data that needs to be absolutely up to the second correct, or is it data that actually, you know, as long as it was a day, an hour, et cetera, and up to date, that was kind of good enough. And obviously as well, kind of give you training and support on Power BI features. Now, my belief is that actually the Power BI uh, reporting stuff you don't need knowledge of SQL for this. It's not, you don't need loads of technical ability. It is something that anyone can pick this stuff up, but obviously we are more than happy to be on hand to offer training and support um, kind of for that. Um, and that kind of wraps it up really. So if anyone has any questions, please let them know in the chat and I will do my best to answer any questions anyone may have.